field for the coin toss. We've got a full house of 50,000 plus on hand today. There you see Giles and Brad White, number 74 for Texas Tech, along with uh, Perry Morin. And referee Frank Shepard with the coin toss. The wind, as we told you in the pregame, is uh, whipping uh, from south to north at about uh, 20 to 25 miles per hour. Actually, uh, it's a swirling type wind when you get down on the field, but I think if you take the south end zone, uh, it will be to your advantage if you're a kicker. So let's see uh, the decision rest with one of those seven players on the field. Texas, it looks like. has won the toss and will defend that south end zone. Ray Auburn, they will kick the football. Not really a surprise. I, I tell you, I think one of the things that may have been a factor, Coach Akers was watching Telchik punt before the game, and he was really having a difficult time. So I've got to think that that was a, a big part. As good defense as they're playing, uh, make Tech make a mistake. Uh, if not, get good field position going into the win. And, of course, you see the Red Raider making circles around the football field every time Texas Tech scores. Happy Six will take a tour around Jones Stadium. There is Happy. Just prior to the coin flip today, uh, Texas Tech All-American Gabriel Rivera was introduced uh, during the pregame ceremonies. There he is, Senior Sachs, first trip to Lubbock since suffering that paralyzing automobile accident in Pittsburgh back on October the 20th, 1983. And uh, he has been in Lubbock for a couple of days. And he looks uh, in pretty good shape, Ray Auburn. Of yeah, course, I, not when he was terrorizing the Rice Owls when you were coach. I tell you, the, the not only, uh, the, you know, the loss, but he was becoming a real, real good football player when that happened to him, but uh, it's just a classic example of what can happen to you. <laughs> you better enjoy life every day. Let's take a look now, if we can, at the game officials today. The referee will be Frank Shepard. The umpire will be John Gaston. There they are. The linesman will be Bob Jones. The line judge, Walt Coleman. The field judge, Mike Wetzel. And the back judge, Randy McAnally. But the referee, referee today will be Frank Shepard, and he is a veteran of quite a few of the Southwest Conference Wars. The big question for everybody here at Jones Stadium, Ray Auburn, can Texas Tech pull off an upset, something that nobody else has been able to do this year? And I tell you, Bill, I, I think that uh, they're going to have to move the football with some consistency, and at the same time, as you mentioned in the pregame show, avoid the, the big hit by the Texas team. Uh, Kevin Nelson's capable of breaking the long one. Uh, Duhon, Epps in the kicking game. Uh, I think all of those things that Tech's going to have to be very concerned about. And then they're going to have to be able to move the football to maintain possession, keep it away from Texas. A phenomenal record. Uh, the Longhorns now unbeaten in 23 straight regular season games going all the way back to 1982 and beginning with that 27 to nothing victory over Texas Tech, which happened right here two years ago. In fact, uh, Texas leads this series 27 to 6, but the Red Raiders have given the Longhorns trouble in Lubbock during recent years. And they're hoping to give it to them again as you see Jeff Ward get, getting ready to kick off. And back deep for Texas Tech will be number one, Charles Simpson, and number 34, Keith Henderson. It's a great atmosphere for college football right here, Bill. A uh, sellout crowd, people stand there. Wear a lot of red, a lot of orange. Uh, ought to be a good one. Jeff Ward gets his toe into it, and it'll go five yards deep in the end zone. He's going to bring it back out. That's Charles Simpson, and he breaks through a big hole to about the 20-yard line. Had he not hesitated, he may have made more yardage, but he hesitated just briefly in the end zone, and that gave Texas enough time for the penetration to get there. Let's set the offense for you now for Texas Tech. The offensive line, it's a dandy group. Joe Walter, Joe McMeans, Jim McIntyre, Aubrey Richburg, and Jeff Keith. Buzz Tatum, the tight end, along with Aaron Cassie, Freddie Wells, Robert Lewis, they're good ones. Charles Simpson and Troy Smith, the wingback. Smith and uh, Tatum, good wide receivers. Cassie on the first play. Handoff up the middle and again all the way to the 30-yard line. For Texas Tech. And uh, close to a first down. Goes Robert Lewis. Set the defense now. McKinney, Bronner, to great Heathcock, uh, Telchik uh, will be the punter. Ty Allert, Tony Edwards, and June James along the front uh, are the linebackers. 
And Jerry Gray, Braggs, Lott, and Tillman in the defensive backfield. High formation for the Red Raiders. Cassie to throw. And he's intending it. Out to James McGowan, number 38, out of Lindale, a 5'10", 190-pound freshman, and it was out of his reach. James McGowan, sort of a surprise starter. Well, he is, because uh, I thought we'd see Robert Lewis or Timmy Smith in there, but that's not so. Aaron Cassie is starting back there with uh, Freddie Wells and James McGowan. Sid Chambers uh, has apparently been moved out by Jeff Keith at right tackle, which uh, should strengthen their football team. Uh, Sid Chambers is a pretty good football player. Cassie fakes it and keeps it for the draw. Across the 35 to the 37. Tony DeGray and Bill Hethcock in on the tackle for Texas. But not before a pretty good pickup of about uh, seven yards. A little misdirection there. Just a little step fake to the fullback, giving him option looking and going back away from it. And uh, Texas pursues pretty well. He found a scene back behind the... the uh, left tackle. Well, it has to be tough for Aaron Cassie to come in as a freshman. Uh, Bruce Parkins into the lineup now for Tech. And uh, coming wide will be Charles Simpson. Handoff to the man in the back, and that's uh, Tony DeGrate. Bulldogs him down at about the 38-yard line, and it's going to be short for a Texas Tech first down, so we will see the punter now for Texas Tech, Dennis Vance. Vance coming in with a 39-yard punting average. Texas got a nine-man front, That's giving them a rush look. Michael Felt, number 47, back deep for Texas, and they went after it. And uh, they, he had to rush the kick, and it's going to be out of bounds, and it may have gone only about 10 or 15 yards. Let's see. So a big break there for Texas. Brought everybody a lot of pressure and, and into the win at the same time. The offense for Texas, a big, big front. Gene Chilton at 295, right steel hammer, Chester and Stewart. Keep an eye on Brent Duhon at wide receiver and um, Billboy Bryant for Texas. And of course, William Harris, the big tight end, always dangerous. Little boy Bryant coming wide to the left, Duhon to the right, eye formation. Handoff up the middle to Terry Orr, and he's going nowhere. Tim Crawford and Brad White in on the tackle. White's the veteran out of Tohoka, 6'7", 236, and he leads this team with five sacks and uh, 51 tackles on the year. There you see Crawford, Riggs, White, Byers, Kinsey, Hastings, Giles, and Jones. Bill, they substitute, substitute quite a bit up front, keep them fresh in order to get pressure. Artis Jackson now in the game for Texas Tech. Second down and about eight for Texas. Hand off in the backfield to Kevin Nelson as he gets to the 45, to the 47, and look at all of the black jerseys led by Brad Hastings and Artis Jackson. Hastings with 71 tackles for Texas Tech and one interception on the season. He's 6'3", 230 out of Arlington, and he's a dandy. Here, here comes Artis Jackson out of the ball game. He's 300 pounds. <laughs> they put him in at the nose in and went into a three-man front look with, with three down linemen with Artis Jackson at the nose. Todd Dodge at the controls. Kevin Nelson, Terry Orr in the split backfield. Third down and five for the Longhorns. Bill Boy Bryant in motion. Hand off to Nelson. He's got running room if he wants it. He gets across the 50 into Tech territory. I don't know if he had enough for the first down. It will be close. They either got a, a clipping call, Bill, illegal use of the hands out here on the corner by uh, Bill Boy Bryan, the motion man inside, or an illegal block. Holding, they got the holding call. So referee Frank Shepard will call uh, Texas Tech over there to talk it over. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Red Raiders march it back. Let's see if we can see the holding here, right? Okay, uh, Duhon comes, I mean, excuse me, Bill Boy Bryant comes in at the bottom of the screen in motion. You can see him crack back, and I think he grabbed as he felt like he was losing uh, the Riggs kid on the, on the play. Kevin Nelson, who was running with the ball there, is the freshman out of Dulles High School, 5'9", 183. He was inserted into the starting lineup about three games ago. 
and he's added a lot of speed to this Texas attack. Let's listen to Frank Shepard. So it'll be third down, and let's call it right at 15 yards for Texas. Keep an eye now on the wide receivers. Uh, Brent Duhon's a good one, but the big, big money man for Texas has been William Harris. Tell you one thing important here is the pass rush of Texas Tech. They've gone into an odd, odd man front. Look like they're playing man coverage. Make a reverse for Dodge. Here comes Tech, and they've got a fumble. It's a loose ball at the 15-yard line, and the Red Raiders have it. Ronald Byers, number 77. Bill, there's a flag down up in the line of scrimmage. I believe it's holding against Texas, which will be declined and give Tech the football. That's the call, and Texas Tech has a first down on the Texas 15-yard line. So a turnover gets the Red Raiders going, and that's something Fred Akers did not want Ray Auburn to get this crowd into the football game. Right, the win, they take the win, kick off playing field position football, and then make a mistake like that. The important thing here is Texas Tech needs to get something on the board. Troy Smith is flanked out to the left. Freddie Wells, James McGowan in the backfield for the Red Raiders. In their black home uniforms with silver pants. Cassie, he's got a man open in the end zone. Can he get it to him? No, he can't. Well, he had his big tight end, Buzz Tatum, all alone at the back of the end zone. James Lott was the closest Texas man to him. Bill, that's a good, good call by Jerry Moore and his staff. They, they got a big break. You try to get hit him for the big play right off the bat. Uh, Tatum was open. The ball was thrown a little bit high. Good play fake inside. Two tight ends, one wide receiver. Bruce Parkins and Troy Smith now both in the lineup for Texas Tech. Freddie Wells, McGowan in the... Well, now the only one back there is Freddie Wells. In motion goes Smith. To see, he wants to put it up again. He's got a man at the 10-yard line. And Troy Smith drops it. Well, he had it. He was there. The ball was well thrown. And just, I think Troy Smith looked back up field for just a second to see where Jerry Gray was, which a lot of people will be guilty of that over the year. And as he turned his head back, the ball was there, and he just didn't catch it. Not, uh, didn't concentrate on the football. James Lott, Stephen Braggs, Jerry Gray, and Tony Tillman. It'll be third down now and 10 from the 15. Again in motion goes Troy Smith. To see to pass. Big Texas rush. And bowling in there is number 87, James McKinney. Well, McKinney has 49 tackles on the year. Five sacks make it six now. But the big statistic on McKinney, Ray, is he's pressured the quarterback 24 times this year. That was a good job by James McKinney. At the same time, Blake Brauner from the other side caused Cassie to pull up, which allowed McKinney to make the hit from the back side. So it was really a team effort there. McKinney was coming hard, but Blake Brauner pulled him up from his left in order for McKinney to make the sack from the right side. That time, Texas Tech had to call a timeout to get Roland Boswell in the game. They did not have enough players. They only had 10, so a costly timeout now for the Red Raiders. Ricky Gann will be in the game, kicking from his own 32-yard line. And so it will be a field goal attempt of 42 yards. And Gann, after, well, not an impressive performance last season, has really come on strong this year. He's kicked 12 of 18 field goals, 13 of 14 extra points for 49 points on the season. Ricky Gann has a heck of a leg. You know about it. Yeah, he kicked one against us when he was a sophomore down at Rice Stadium with about 25 seconds left to beat us. Uh, he's been in some pressure situations. I don't think pressure bothered him. The wind swirling may be the biggest difficulty he'll face right here on this kick. Well, of course, this is his home turf, too. So if the wind swirling down there, I'm sure he's had to kick into it several times before. So we'll just wait and see. Of course, having to call a timeout makes him have to wait around a little more. Well, yeah, something that they don't want to do. But they need to get some points out of, out of this uh, fumble recovery. Brian Brock will be holding for the Red Raiders. The ball will be put down at the 32-yard line. Gann gets plenty of leg into it if it's through there, and it is. So happy 
26 makes a tour around the Jones Stadium AstroTurf as the Texas Tech Red Raiders draw first blood. Three to nothing over the Texas Longhorns with 10.42 left to play in the first quarter. And not a real impressive drive, but a big turnover. Yeah. I wonder if that guy riding the horse is on scholarship. Yes, he is. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> if he is, that's a scholarship I'd like to have. Zurich Labriere. I'd hate to be riding around that AstroTurf on a rainy day, however. I've seen the day when we could have killed that horse when we played up here, <laughs> running around so much. <laughs> he had to eat a lot of oats. Oh, huh? yeah. They changed horses at halftime. Well, the uh, one thing there, a uh, good thing uh, for the coaching staff uh, as far as Texas Tech is concerned is getting on that scoreboard first. But a big thing for Texas is they prevented seven points and set, made them settle for three. Uh, good job of their defense coming up with a big play with McKinney with the sack and putting them out of what is a considered a chip shot, gimme field goal. Rick again kicked the ball well, but you know they prevented it, what would be considered just a chip shot or an easy field goal. A big boost for the Tech football team, I think. Kelvin Epps uh, will be back deep for Texas, standing at about his 10-yard line, along with uh, Tony Tillman. And Gann will kick it off. Texas Tech leading it 3 to nothing. 10.42 left to play in the first half. And he kicks a squibber along the AstroTurf. It may have been touched by a Texas player, so somebody better get on it back in the end zone, and they let it run through the end zone and out. Well, that was a good job by Rick again. It, with the wind blowing the way it is, he didn't want to kick the ball up high. He squib kicked it. Uh, the Texas up man elected to let it go by him. Nobody handling. They get the ball on the 20. Good coverage also by the Tech special team. So Todd Dodge comes trotting in to run the Texas attack. He'll have Kevin Nelson, Terry Orr in the backfield. Brent Duhon, Bill Boy Bryant flanked out wide with William Harris. The big tight end at 235, number 95. Also a valuable pass receiver. Dodge hand off to Nelson, and he's going nowhere. Mike Kinsey, number 83. Penetrated in that time, and Nelson, if anything, lost a yard. Bill, I wouldn't be surprised to see Texas go up on top with the football here in this series. They've got to win. They've got to, they've got to have something good happen to them. The momentum is riding with the Texas Tech Red Raiders right at this point. Kinsey, the strong linebacker, 6'2", 226. He's a junior out of Brownwood. There you see that big Texas offensive line. Gene Chilton on left tackle at 295. Greg Wright, 250. Steelhammer, 254. Second down. Again, Nelson at the 22. A gain of maybe two before Artis Jackson... Closes in along with Tim Crawford, Mark Rothblack. Jackson's a big one. He's a rangy freshman, 6'5", and, well, 300 pounds out of Dallas South Oak Cliff. And there goes the wave. <laughs> when it gets to the Texas group, watch. They don't, uh, they did it this time. They got booed a minute ago for not participating. <laughs> <laughs> there you see the north end zone. We'll show you that a little later. It's all grass enclosed, but it's covered completely by Texas Tech students. Third down and eight. Now for Texas. Draw play. Dodge. 25. And he stretches out to the 27. And that will not be enough for a first down. Brad Hastings, the middle linebacker for the Red Raiders, wrapped him up. So Texas Tech forces the Longhorns to punt. It's a good series for Tech. Uh, maintaining their momentum. Good job by their defense. John Telchik will be back to uh, deep to punt. He comes into the game with a 43.8 average. This time he gets a wobbler off and it hits at the 30. He's going to let it roll. Look out. It could go down and it goes all the way into the Red Raider end zone. Wow, what a leg. For John Telchik as he punted that the length of the football field. A candlelight Christmas cowboy style will attract thousands again this year to Texas Tech University's unique ranching heritage center. For the public, it's a free stroll down the yesteryear path, visiting century-old ranch homes where volunteer family groups prepare for the holidays. Singing carols by the campfire, a cowboy Santa puppet shows, 
All coming your way December 4th, 5th, and 6th at the Texas Tech Ranching Heritage Center. First and 10 for the Red Raiders. Again, Cassie tries the draw play, gets maybe a couple before he runs into Bill Hethcock and uh, big number 94, Ralph Darnell. Tech needs to move the ball up the field a little bit, get him some, some working room. Are you surprised, Ray, by the backfield combination of Freddie Wells and James McGowan Very by much Tech? So. Very much so. Flip back this time to Wells. He's trying to go wide. Here comes that Texas pursuit, and they've got him for no gain, and look who it is. Number two, the All-American, Jerry Gray. McGowan. Correction, that was McGowan that time. Had a little trouble feeling the ball, it looked like, which slowed him down getting outside, and just wasn't able to maintain it. I think Jerry Gray was there when he got ready to turn the corner. He never really got his shoulder pad turned up the field. Charlie Simpson checks into the Tech lineup. Tony Griffin becomes the fifth defensive back for Texas, checking in in place of Ty Alec. Look for a stunt here out of the Texas front. Bring a backer or a defensive back, possibly, to bring. There's a backer coming, June James. To see, looking for the man. He's got his man, Freddie Wells, who made a great catch at about the 24-yard line, but it was smelled out early by Texas uh, number 62, June James. Show you kind of athlete June James is. See him there in your screen. He jumps up field, hits a tackle, hits a hits a back coming at his feet, and there he is <laughs> making the play. Ooh. I tell you now, th those kind of guys make a good football coach. Dennis Vance standing back inside his ten. That's Kelvin Epps for Texas back on the Longhorn 35-yard line. Here they come again. Nine man rush. Epps decides to let it go, and it gets a Texas bounce. It could have gone down about uh, 10 or 15 more yards. So Texas Tech kills it at the 32. Texas will try to get something going in just a moment with 6.34 left in the first quarter. We'll be back with more in a moment. This is Home Sports Entertainment. Not great field position. They'd like to have gotten better, but that's not bad uh, considering the win. I think that was a 44-yard punt. Uh, Epps should have felt fielded the football, but he let it bounce. Fortunately for Texas, it didn't uh, take a deep bounce. Pass out to Kevin Nelson. Good pursuit by Tech, but look at how quick Nelson is. He was able to turn the corner. And we'll see where they mark, uh, mark him as out of bounds. But that freshman out of Dulles High School was run out by Leonard Jones, the rover for Texas Tech. Let's watch it again. This is actually a lateral, right, Ray? Yeah, it's a screen. Uh, just kind of a slip screen to the tailback of the eye formation. You, you release your tight end inside and block a linebacker, and your fullback blocks on the end man on line of scrimmage. You pitch a ball to him, and, and uh, in this case, it was a lateral. to try to get it where he's turned up feet a little bit more. Duhon to the right, Bill Boy Bryant to the left. Eye formation. Hand off to the up man, or at the 45, and he's right at midfield. A gain of 10 and a Texas first down, Merv Skirlark. Makes the stop for Texas Tech, but Texas on a quick hitter up the middle to Terry Orr with a first down. Bill, that was just a trap, and I tell you, Orr cut it behind the pulling guard and found a seam in there for a 10-yard gain. Texas Tech uh, moving all of their defense around. Dawson now in the game along with Brad White, Dwayne Giles, Mike Kinsey along the front. And off again. And that running room is just hard to come by as Brad White, number 74, came all the way over from his left tackle spot to make the tackle. Tech went into two wide receivers. Duhon and, and Bill Boy Bryant were wide to the wide side of the field. Giles, the linebacker, walked out here. They had four men, actually six men, defending the run with a little cross sweep look. Great job of pursuit by the Tech defense. Now Texas Tech brings in uh, Mark Rothblatt, number 79. He's 6'4", 250 out of El Paso. He'll be along the front with Ronald Byers, Brad White, and Wayne Dawson. Second down and eight for Texas. Dodge looking left, and he's got Bill Boy Bryant at the 32-yard line. It's good for a gain of 12 and another Texas first down. Roland Mitchell was defending for the Red Raiders, but that was perfect execution by the Longhorns. Bill, that was uh, 
That's a good throw, a good route by Bill Boy Bryant. I wish we could see it at the bottom. He gave him a little up move and then a little post move and then broke it out, and a good throw by Dodge. Uh, Roland Mitchell is playing pretty much head up on him, a little bit outside, and he's giving him the inside route. We could look for him and try to break the post on him here in a minute. He needs some inside-out help. Bill Boy Bryant to the right. Duhon to the left. I formation, Texas first down. And off this time to Orr, and he gets a tough four or five yards down to the Texas Tech 25 before Dwayne Giles makes the stop for the Red Raiders. Well, Giles is an impressive football player. He's 230 pounds plus and can run. He's really, really uh, an impressive football player. He should be a very high, high draft choice. He came into this game, the weak linebacker, Dwayne Giles, uh, with 71 tackles, second on the Texas Tech team this year. But an effective run by Orr makes it second down and six. That time, the uh, ball uh, play was a little late in developing. Either the center didn't get the count or everybody else just went a little bit early. I think uh, it might be the case that Terry Steelhammer didn't know that it was on the first sound. Steelhammer was the backup center when the season started. Gene Chilton started at center. Well, I talked to Gene Chilton before the game. I've known him for quite a while. What an impressive young man. Well, at 6'3", 295, you're impressive. But Paul Jetton went out with that turf toe, and they had to do some shuffling. So they moved Chilton out to left tackle, Greg Wright at left guard, and Steelhammer moved up to be the starting center. Okay, now they've gone to the tight end in the slot here in the pass. They've used motion with it and run the sweep to it and come back away from it some. There goes Terry Orr. So far, Ray, uh, Texas Tech giving Terry Orr some running room. Brad Hastings on the tackle for Tech. They're concentrating, it looks like, on stopping Kevin Nelson. Well, Terry Orr has creased them several times. Trap, just the base fullback dive. And they're going to have to slow that down a little bit because now they get inside conscious and Kevin Nelson can hurt them outside. Again, Jerry Moore shuffling the troops. Brad White checks in along with Mike Kinsey, Wayne Dawson, Roland Byers across the front line with Giles and Brad Hastings backing them up. Third down and five. Bill Boy Bryant in motion. There's a fumble, a big scramble, and Texas Tech has it. Mike Kinsey, number 83, was the man on the spot for the Red Raiders. He just looks like he didn't get the handle on it right there. And then the guard's pulling, and that deflects the football. He can't find it. Good job by uh, Kinsey of getting in after the ball. Nelson dove at it, but, you know, you, if your quarterback doesn't get the handle and the guard pulls around, uh, he knocks the ball even further loose, and then you've got real problems, and that's what happened there. The second fumble in the first quarter for Texas. 4.20 left to play in the first quarter. Tech already leading by three from the 28-yard line. Handoff up the middle. Big running room. That time for James McGowan. And June James had to tackle him, but not before McGowan scampers to about the 40, and that will be enough for a Texas Tech first down. There is a player down, and I believe that is McGowan. Tell you what, he's been impressive, Bill. He put his head down, they got his shoulder pads over, turned north-south, and ran the football. Well, coming into this game, Robert Lewis and Timmy Smith were the big guns for Texas Tech. Freddie Wells uh, starting at fullback. James McGowan, the freshman out of Lindale, not playing that much, but uh, he is very impressive today. I tell you, it's a good job by Freddie Wells of kicking out on the outside linebacker. Look at the run in there, but oh, run, it just ran over June James. That's just a power play, off tackle, double down, kick out. So far, McGowan uh, has carried four times for 22 yards. Also good blocking that time by the center, Jim McIntyre, and the left guard, Joe McMeans and Joe Walter. Now, Joe Walter, 6'6", 270 at left tackle for Texas Tech, and McMeans is 6'2", about 235. So when you go up behind Joe Walter, you go up behind a big one. Well, I tell you, I, I, had, I saw their Baylor ball game, and Joe Walter and then Sid Chambers, Sid is uh, 6'6", 270. Those two guys... <laughs> Uh, look like two big ice boxes standing over there. And you know, they lost the Bizarre kid earlier this year. Right. Clovis Hale, who was on our staff last year, had told me that he thought uh, Bizarre might be the best offensive lineman in the preseason that they would have on their squad. And since they've lost him, they've had to do some shuffling. But they've got good size. They're not as big as Texas up front, but they've got good size. 
So coming in now will be Robert Lewis, number 27, who was uh, supposed to be the starter in this game. And uh, he will line up in the back of the eye. Freddie Wells will be at fullback. So here we take a look at uh, what normally is the starting backfield for Texas Tech. Aaron Cassie barking the signal. Hand off to Lewis. And uh, he's inside the 40 at about the 42-yard line. Stephen Bragg's on the tackle for Texas. Last year, uh, Ray Auburn, uh, Robert Lewis rushed for 126 yards on 25 carries against Texas. In fact, that's the most yardage uh, any back had had against the Longhorns. I tell you, he came into the game, and he was high five and everybody in the huddle, so he's fired up about getting his opportunity with McGowan out of the ball game. Split backfield, second down eight for the Red Raiders. C looking for a receiver, and he throws it out of bounds at the 50. It was intended for Troy Smith. At that time, John Hagee uh, had pretty good coverage on him, and I thought Cassie uh, showed some wisdom there by throwing it out of everyone's reach. Just to sprint out of split backs, Ty Allard came upfield and put some pressure on him, made him deliver the ball a little bit before he wanted to. I think so. It's a good job of getting it away out, out to the outside of the field, out of bounds, where it couldn't be intercepted. Cassie uh, came out of Ballinger, Texas, where he was an all-star uh, quarterback in 2A football. But he's had an impressive freshman year. Boy, what a great game he had against Texas A&M for the Red Raiders. The third down, and he's in trouble now. Ralph Darnell, number 94, the man in for Texas. Uh, problem they had, they had good coverage and they, they brought a lot of heat from up front. No games or stunts, didn't bring any linebackers. They did a good job of covering with a lot of pressure. Dennis Vance will be back on his 20-yard line to punt. Again, a nine-man look up front. There's Kelvin Epps, number 40. Well, he drops it. He picks it up, now he's going to run, he's got running room. He's at the 45, the 50, and he's down in Texas territory at the 47-yard line. That was one fumble that paid dividends. That was a scholarship run there, Bill. If he doesn't make it, it's his scholarship. <laughs> I, I tell you what happened, Tech had, uh, Texas had a hold up on, they were trying to hold everybody up. And he fumbled the ball, they relaxed a little bit, and he took off and ran with it. Now, now, Ray, Texas, Texas tried to block the first two. Had they tried to block that one, they'd have had him dead to right. Right, exactly. As you can see there in, the, in your picture, the guy blocking on number 35 from Texas Tech had him turned all the way around. A gain of about 15 on the play. So a potential disaster turned into a big gain for Texas Tech. Okay. Well, stop by. I tell you, Bill, sometimes it's better to be lucky <laughs> than good. <And> that's <laughs> You've heard that before. Oh, yeah. I tell you, but and that was a good job of Vance running the football. As I say, that could have been a scholarship deal there. Second down now and seven for the Red Raiders. Robert Lewis comes out. Timmy Smith has it now as he's checked into the ball game into the 40 down to about the Texas 42 yard line. Smith and Lewis share time at the high running back position. Smith, a six foot 200 pounder, a sophomore out of Hobbs, New Mexico. And boy, what an athlete he was in high school. Yeah, very, very heavily recruited. Billy, Tech has got about a minute 20 left in this quarter. If they can get a first down, they turn and have the win. Uh, that'll make a great deal of difference for them. He's a little bit out, I would think, out of Ricky Gann's field goal range at this point. All right, Lewis had to check in at the last minute. Troy Smith in motion. Third down, he needs four. He's got his man out here, and uh, he had enough for the first down. Ty Allard was defending, but it looked like he had Freddie Wells all alone down there at about the 42. Yeah, just play action pass. They're getting, uh, you see Freddie Wells come out right behind Buzz Tatum right there, get out in the flat. Ty Allard's running behind him. The ball's delivered, he just, just doesn't catch it. It would have been a first down. As they say, it hit him in a bad place, huh? Yeah, right in the middle of the hand. So that great run that time by Dennis Vance for naught as Texas Tech. Vance will be punting again. This time he just uh, punts it down to the 10 if they can kill it, and he just couldn't quite get to it. That was number 50, 
Todd Ryden. And he tried to get to it at about inside the five-yard line. Couldn't do it, so the ball will come out to the 20-yard line. The University of Texas will host the NCAA Swimming and Diving Championships in 1985. The nation's finest collegiate swimmers and divers will be on the Austin campus for what many consider will be the best swimming meet in 1985. All session tickets will be on sale starting January and are $30 for the entire week. That's the NCAA Swimming and Diving Championships in Austin, March the 26th through March the 31st. Ball at the 20. 54 seconds left in the quarter. Texas trailing by three. So far, the Longhorns have not been able to move the football. Good job of running by Terry Orr. Calvin Riggs wraps him up. But a gain of three on the play for the big 231-pounder out of Abilene. Bill, at Tech is going with Artis Jackson at the nose tackle, moving into an odd man front I, I, to try to mess up Texas blocking schemes. That was a trap, and Artis Jackson just stood everybody up and was able to hold his ground and allow the linebackers to come across and make the play. Well, now Jackson's in there along with Scott Davis, David Beaudry, and Calvin Riggs. Dodge wants to throw, coming from the backside. He's almost tackled. He throws it up for grab. Another Texas turnover. Bill, Calvin Riggs calls that that interception he grabbed Dodge around the ankles just as he released the ball and the ball skied on him caused him to overstride look at the bottom of your screen Calvin Riggs beats Gene Chilton up the field comes in with his left hand gets him right by the leg Dodge throws the ball and causes him to look like an ante over throws the interception well he threw it into some heavy coverage too as Texas Tech had that one well smelled out and uh, three turnovers by Texas. Two fumbles and interception in the first quarter. Only 10 seconds left to play from the 35-yard line. Cassie wants to pass. He's got a receiver downfield. Tatum's got it. At the Texas 48-yard line, Jerry Gray defending. That's a real good call by the offensive staff. I believe that was uh, David, David Nash, Nash instead of Buzz Tatum. David Nash, the senior out of Los Angeles, California. And you told me coming up here on the plane, he's a big one at 6'4", yeah. 232. A very fine athlete. We spent a little time with David <laughs> trying to convince him to come to Rice. A very, very talented guy. Can run for a, for a fellow his size. That was a 17-yard pass play. That time from Cassie to David Nash. First and 10. Two seconds left to play in the first quarter. This will be the final play of the quarter. Hand off to James McGowan as he dives over left guard for about two. And that will end the first quarter of play with a score. Texas Tech three and Texas nothing. The Red Raiders smelling an upset in Lubbock. We'll be back with more right after this brief timeout. This is Home Sports Entertainment. Conditions for football in Lubbock, Texas. Bill James McGowan is going to the dressing room with a trainer and the team doctor. Can't tell. Well, look, he's walking fairly good, but he's got a little bit of a limp. Robert Lewis in his place. Cassie. Big Texas rush and a fumble. Texas Tech has it, however, but the man to create all the problems, the big refrigerator, Tony DeGreat, number 99, 6'4", 280, out of Snyder, Texas. They brought the linebackers. As you can see, the back stepped up and protected pretty well, but DeGreat broke loose. Just fortunate they were able to hold on the ball because C came up limping a little bit after that play. Got a little help that time from Tony Edwards, who's no small one at 260. They bring up third down and 17 now for Tech. Hand off to Lewis as he gets right up to about midfield before he's brought down. A gain of about three or four. And Dennis Vance will have to punt one more time. So right now the Texas defense is doing its best to hold the offense in the game. Three turnovers for Texas in the first quarter but Ray the big statistic is the fact that Tech has only been able to make three points out of those three turnovers and in the thing that you do with a ball club like Texas is you if you don't get to take advantage of some of those things it's, it's going to come back to haunt you this time uh, Texas with a little bit of a rush on Vance punts it straight up in the air Kelvin Epps decides and wisely so to let it go but it's going to go down to the Texas four yard line 
killed down there by Charles Jackson, a punt of 46 yards. You've got to handle the football. <laughs> You've just got to handle it. But he got lost. He got turned now, around. Now, the sun could have been a factor in that. I, I don't know. But I, you have got to handle a punt. That's two that he's let bounce. And, and uh, you're going to lose yardage uh, almost every time that happens. You know, Todd Dodge hasn't had very good field position on any of the drives he's tried to start here. Now they're on their three-and-a-half-yard line going into the 25-mile-an-hour wind. Well, they've definitely got their work cut out for them. They need to maintain possession of football and take it into the wind. Beaudry, Byers, White, and Dawson along the front for Texas Tech. Wayne Giles and Doug, uh, Brad Hastings in the game for the Red Raiders. First and ten, high formation, Terry Orr, the workhorse. Let's call it a gain of a half a yard. Byers and Hastings there about the same time and then joined by a bunch of swarming Red Raiders. We've got a sellout crowd of 50,000 plus at Jones Stadium and they're looking for an upset today. And as Ray told you, Texas Tech usually finds the measure of Texas on election year. I, I didn't know that. My daughter pointed that out to me. <laughs> She's a student out here. And I... Ray's daughter Shannon is a sophomore here at Texas Tech. There's a handoff uh, to Kevin Nelson, Dwayne Giles, again in Hastings, in on the tackle. Boy, that Brad Hastings with 71 tackles coming into the game. Giles, uh, as you already pointed out, with 71 tackles. That's a pretty good defensive unit for Texas Tech. Jay Giles is a really impressive looking young man on just standing there on the hoof and then when you see him run around he's really more impressive. Well here comes a penalty against Texas Tech. I tell you Tech is pursuing the football awfully well. Texas is going to is going to have to do something to slow their pursuit down. They're having seven eight guys on every play every running play. Somebody from Tech must have lined up off sides uh, prior to that play. So the Longhorns have one of their bigger gains. Uh, Right, instead of having third and about uh, seven, it's second and three and a half, uh, a big difference. Power to the right side for Texas on second down and four. Hand off. That's uh, number 35, Jerome Johnson, but Merv Skerlark was there, the freshman out of Monahans, and they didn't fool anybody. They've got the strength of the formation over here, pulling on side guard and block everybody down. Good job out there by uh, Carl Carter of stacking up the pulling guard, and they made the hit on Jerome Johnson. Good play. Big play for Texas now, trying to get out of the shadow of its own goal line. Third down and three. Texas Tech leading by three in the second quarter. Hand off, and Johnson has a little trouble finding the handle. Now he does. Gets out over the 15 to the 20-yard line. A Texas first down. Good running that time by Jerome Johnson. The correction, Ray, that was Terry Orr, right? Oh, he having trouble handling, <laughs> hanging on the ball down there deep in their territory. They put the strength of formation the same way and went away from it. And that's just good ball carrying. You think if he'd have dropped that ball down there, Fred Akers may uh, have had a small seizure. He'd have probably been laying prone over there at the 50. They'd have had the trainers working on him. And he, and he just had to juggle a football, that's all. It looked like the handoff was smooth. Fumble! And I believe Texas fell on it at about the 21-yard line. I think that was Jerome Johnson. Ronald Byers was there. Todd Dodge got the handle on it. Let's see it again, Ray. I believe the uh, handoff was to the up man, 35, Jerome. Jerome Johnson, and he just never got it. Trap play. Uh, Greg Wright pulled from left guard to trap. Just didn't handle the football. Kevin Nelson attracts a whole bunch of Red Raiders. Mark Rothblatt, Artis Jackson, right at the line of scrimmage. Well, I tell you, the Texas Tech defensive front is playing very, very well right now with their long, with their linebackers. They are swarming people. Todd Dodge looking over to Fred Akers. We'll get to Fred Akers in a moment. One of the most fantastic coaching records in the history of the Southwest Conference. Bill Boy Bryant to the right. Duhon to the left. Third down and 12. 
Texas deep in its own territory at the 20. Dodge rolling right. Looking for Harris. And he's dropped it at the 38-yard line. Roland Mitchell was defending for Texas Tech. But big William Harris just could not hold on to the pitch game. Bill, that's a great break on the football by Roland Mitchell. He came from six yards away and broke on the ball, and he caused that to happen. It was a good throw. It was kind of a drop back and then a half sprint or roll. Great job by Roland Mitchell breaking on the football. Telchik will be uh, attempting his second punt now. His first punt, as you'll remember, went the length of the field 73 yards. His previous uh, longest of punt had been 69 yards against OU. He'll be back on his five. This time, however, he'll be punting into the wind. And look at that punt. Into the wind. And he forces the Texas Tech man all the way back to the 22-yard line. And he made a heck of a fair catch on it. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, John Telchik, that is just an excellent job of kicking the ball into this kind of wind. Uh, now the Texas defense comes up with a big play here, and they're back in the hunt. That was Bruce Perkins, a 57-yard punt from John Telchik into about a 20-mile-an-hour breeze. The key to that punt, however, he's got the point to turn over for him. Bill, Bruce Perkins is a walk-on from Coronado here in, uh, in Lubbock and uh, proved point of some every year somebody's overlooked. That time, Robert Lewis tried the right side, but when you try Tony DeGreat, you better be loaded for bear, along with James McKinney. And Robert Lewis was going nowhere. Boy, what a weapon it is to have a Telchik Ray. You just went from your own 20-yard line to the opponent's 20-yard line. And in, again, into this talk on wind, you're thinking, most people are thinking, well, we can just get them on their side to 50. We're going to be in great shape. And here they got the ball at their 20. Lemuel Stinson. Going wide to the right, Troy Smith to the left, high formation, and off again to Robert Lewis, and he's caught in the backfield by Tony DeGreat. DeGreat came into this game with 72 tackles. He pressured the quarterback 23 times, and he came up with five sacks. Those stats are All-American quality. He's uh, big enough to be two All-Americans. <laughs> And they have not had much success blocking Tony so far this afternoon. What did you tell me last week? Uh, they had to give up two scholarships to feed him. Yeah, right. They, they count him twice in the Texas count. Third down and 12. Smith in motion. Cassie back on his own 10. He wants to pass. He's got a man at the 22 to the 25. Out to about the 32-yard line goes Freddie Wells before Ralph Darnell can pull him down. And Wells is going to be close to the first down marker. Maybe a little shy. Well, that's a great play by Ralph Darnell. Had he not made that play, it was it was definitely a first down. It could have been a much bigger gain. A good job of Freddie Wells of juking a little bit to the outside and turning the ball up inside. Vance will be punting now from his 15. Uh, he is averaging 37.5 in this game. He came into this contest with a 39-yard average, but he will have the win to his back for the first time today. So pretty good punting average into the breeze for Dennis Vance. Here showing, come the Longhorns again. Showing a nine-man block again. This one may bring rain on a cloudless day. Texas again does not feel the ball. It takes a tech bounce to the 13-yard line. Approximately a 17-yard difference. And if he would fair caught the ball, I think it was at the 30. Now the ball is at the 13. Punt that time of 55 yards for Dennis Vance. So we are seeing a punting exhibition today between Vance and John Telchik for Texas. Telchik's going to have a pretty good average. Yeah, this, this could be a clinic film. We can sell this and make money off punt, punting clinic. Again, the key, however, for the Red Raiders, Texas deep in its own territory at the 14-yard line, having to try to generate another drive. 8.25 left to play in the first half. Texas Tech leading. Texas 3 to nothing. Dodge rolls left. He's got William Harris open. If he can get it to him, he can't get it to him. Whole swarm of Red Raiders led by Wayne Dawson, who is coming off the field. Number 46. A senior out of Temple, Texas. Six foot, 225. And checking in in his place is Tim Crawford. There you see the first quarter, and it was all Texas Tech. 
However, total yards, not a big difference, but Tech does have the three points on the scoreboard. Second down and 11. Dodge to Kevin Nelson. Calvin Riggs comes in from his right end position to make the tackle. Well, in talking to the Tech coaches, Calvin Riggs is an undersized guy that's an overachiever. He's 200 pounds, maybe a little 200 plus, 2425. Uh, Great quickness, as you can see there. That was a big league football play by Calvin Riggs. Ray, I have counted eight different people used by Jerry Sloan in the first five people in the defense for Texas Tech. He's shuttling in his players according to whether he needs a good pass rush or to stop the run. Right. He's in, he's moving the artist Jackson in. Now he's got contained. Oh. Dodge that time, threw across the middle, but there was a lot of pressure from Tim Crawford, and he made him throw too early. And the Tech defense gets a roar of approval from this 50-plus crowd at Jones Stadium. Telchik again back deep to punt. And this time, he'll be standing in his own end zone. Well, you can't say enough about the, the, the rush, rushing of the Tech defensive lineman. This yes. time he gets a line drive off again. Perkins has it at the 40. Coming wide to the left. And there may be a penalty on Texas Tech at about the 47-yard line. As he returned it about uh, eight yards. Bruce Perkins was the man with the football, but there's a flag right there. You see it. Time Telchik punted at 48 yards. This That's wind is not bothering him at all. No, it's it's causing him to be even a little bit, probably concentrate a little bit more. Gerard Senegal made a great play. Then he contained it, was blocked. I think that's the guy they call the clipping penalty on or the holding penalty on. Contained it and still made the play. A, a excellent job with their special team. Well, they call it one of those illegal blocks where you can't block below below the knees. So that'll take it back 15 yards. Something the Tech offense did not need. So for Texas Tech now, the Red Raiders will set up shop on their own 31-yard line. Troy Smith and Charles Simpson double out to the right side. Eye formation. Aaron Cassie. Now he gets the pass off to Lewis at the 30-yard line. But look at June James do a great job of containment along with Ty Allert. I guess for a group, those are the best three linebackers in college football. Ty Allert, June James, and Tony Edwards. And that time you saw them in action. If there are three better, I'd hate to play against them. Well, you know, they'd have to be in the pros. Yeah, th those three guys. Like, for example, on that play, James and uh, Allert were waiting on him to turn the football up the field. See, Carlos Maynard, my old friend that coached the linebackers for us, the defensive coordinator, coach of secondary tech now, doing a little sideline coaching. 6-13 left to play in the first half. This time, a quick pass to Lemuel Stinson, and he makes a diving catch at the 40-yard line. It'll be about a yard and a half shy of a first down for Tech. It'll bring up third down, down about one. James Lott was defending. Bill, this, this is a good job. Just a little slant against man coverage. Because of Stinson's speed, they will keep giving him some room out there because if they start jumping up on that play, he's going to give them a pump and go on them. Of course, he a lot, can lot really of great run. athlete, too, of course. Oh, yeah. He can really run, Stinson. Third Super down speed. and one. High formation for Texas Tech. Looks like to see maybe changing the play at the line of scrimmage. I don't know if it did any good. Robert Lewis that time tried to burrow under that big Texas defensive line. Led by number 85, Blake Bronner and James McKinney. That's going to be close enough for a measurement. Cassie so far today has completed five of ten passes for 40 yards. Cassie came into the game with a 52% ratio of completions, 48 of 91 for 527 yards, five touchdowns and five interceptions. They put it down, and it's a Texas Tech first down by the hair on the football. That pig didn't have much hair on it, then. No, it didn't. And the wave is back in motion around Jones Stadium. They've got it down pretty good here in Lubbock. 
see if they go with it this time. The Texas people participate. Nope, they're going to get booed again. First and 10. Cassie keeps it. Looking for a man to pass it to, but look who's out there. Tony Edwards. And if he can't carry that 260 pounds, senior out of St. Louis, number 63. What a load for a middle linebacker. He's trying to get the ball to buzz Tatum. He was well covered and got so much pressure from Edwards, he just ran the ball out of bounds. So far, the leading rusher for Tech today has been McGowan with 44 yards, but he is in the dressing room, I believe. Good job of running so far, but he ran out of room. June James corralled uh, Timmy Smith at about the 25-yard line. And now in four straight plays, we have mentioned June James twice, Tony Edwards once, and Ty Allert the other time. All three Texas linebackers. Well, I tell you, Tony Edwards actually caused, caused the loss. He, he came straight up the middle, made the first hit, and then allowed James to make the play. Today's attendance here at Jones Stadium has been announced at 50,722, capacity plus. That time, uh, Timmy Smith trying to juke to the outside, but he couldn't get away from June James at the 30, so that tough Texas defense holds one more time. And if you are a football purist and you love your defense, you're loving this game today because you're seeing two of the better defensive displays we've seen in the Southwest Conference this year. I tell you, the, the people up front, are they're having a real war between the offensive and defensive fronts. That was just a sprint draw, trying to catch them coming up field. That was Stephen Braggs back deep for Texas, and Vance will uh, punt one more time from about his 15-yard line. This time he hangs it high, a spiral. Pumble! A scramble for it, and a Texas Tech has it again. The third fumble in the football game for Texas. James Johnson was the man on the football for Texas Tech, and boy, are they excited at Jones Stadium. Okay. Bill, they, they took Kelvin Epps out, I guess, for not catching the football. And I, the wind swirling may have something to do with this, although it looks like he had a, had a fair grip on it and just dropped the football. Well, you know, I said a moment ago when Epps was in there and he let that one go, it looked like the wind had turned him around, Ray, so yeah. he was could, a bit confused on it. Could be a factor. Tech needs to get some points on the board in this, in this possession. Ball at the 35-yard line, 3.38 to play. Hand off to the front man, Freddie Wells, and he doesn't go far. And maybe that could be because of Tony DeGrate and Bill Hethcock. Blake Bronner also getting off the pile, as is Tony Edwards. A gain of about uh, two on the play, so it'll bring up uh, second down, eight and a half. 3.15 left to play in the half. Tech leading three to nothing and trying to get some more points on the board. Texas with four turnovers. Three fumbles and one interception, but still hanging tough. Look for the play-action pass here, Bill. Cassie going wide, he finds a gap, and he twists down to about the 26-yard line. That's a good call. Just the option play, fake to the fullback, and take the ball outside. Cassie ducked it up inside of James McKinney. Somebody got a hold of his jersey. Had they not, Ray, he might have uh, rumbled for about 20 more yards. Bill, I'll tell you something else. Uh, Tony Edwards is holding his right hamstring as if he might be having some tightness there, which would, would be a blow to the Texas defense. David Nash checks into the ball game now along with Troy Smith and Buzz Tatum. So you got two tight ends, I formation, third and one for Tech. Hand off and fighting his way inside the 25 was Timmy Smith. It's going to be very, very close. I'm not sure he made it. Tony DeGrate, Bill Hefcock, Blake Bronner in on the tackle for Texas. Well, if they give him his forward motion, let's see where, it, where he ended up. There he did. He did get maybe got to the 24. They're going to stop and measure it. Well, they didn't give him a real good placement no. on that football. Uh, that was the Texas placement. <laughs> big, big measurement here for both teams, and it's going to come up just inches shy. 
The crowd, of course, wants him to go for it. Tough decision here for Jerry Sloan. Jerry Moore, excuse me, out to Baylor. This might be one of his toughest decisions of the year. He's going for it. Uh, he's going to go for it. I, I, I've got to think that he doesn't figure six points is going to be enough to win the football game, although they're playing great defense. He gets the first down here, get a chance to get a touchdown going with a big lead at halftime. Jerry Moore is going for it. Fourth and inches. Jerry Gray, Tony Edwards was in there, but I believe, uh, did Cassie keep it? Yeah, he kept it on the option, just came to the to the uh, left side. You know, what a great fake that time by Freddie Wells. That may have made that A play. real good job uh, freezing the linebackers inside with a fake. Look at Wells jump in the air and turn his pads as if he had the football, and Cassie followed him on in. That's, that's great execution by their offense. First and 10 from the 21-yard line. 135 left to play in the half. Texas Tech trying to get on the scoreboard. Hand off up the middle. Goes pretty well as he busts down to the Texas 11-yard line. On the quick hitter, June James. Edwards on the tackle for Texas. But a 10-yard run and a Texas Tech first down. Well, they've come option a couple of times, and all of a sudden you just hand the ball base to the fullback. All right, there's timeout is called to move the chains. Time will start again. It now starts to tick off. 125, 124 left in the first half. Tech leading it three to nothing over Texas. Trying to get some more points on the Jones Stadium scoreboard. I formation. Wells in the game with Timmy Smith. Cassie pitches out to Smith, cuts it inside at about the five-yard line. And that time Smith ran over. Jerry Gray and Stephen Braggs had to make the tackle at the five, and we haven't seen that too often this season. Bill, I tell you, uh, they brought Stephen Braggs inside, and Cassie saw him coming and dealt the ball off Timmy Smith, and has an excellent job of carrying the, an excellent job running the option. So a timeout called by Texas Tech, 101 left to play in the first half. Tech now on the five-yard line. We'll be back in a moment. This is Home Sports Entertainment. This bud's for everyone who keeps things rolling in the mighty Mississippi. Break away bars, break away bars. Please respond. Let's get him. Yes, thank you, Goldie. We're right below here and we're all the way out. I'll come around and port side and bump her there. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this bud's for you. Welcome back to Jones Stadium. We've got uh, a minute, one second left to play in the first half. Texas Tech taking a timeout to uh, gather the thoughts. The ball in the five. Let's look at that last play again, Ray Auburn. You can see Braggs ran the stunt. And to give you again the kind of athlete he is, there he is coming in, takes a quarterback, comes back outside, and makes a play on the pitch back. Boy, did Timmy Smith run right over Jerry Gray that time. Wow, we haven't seen that too much. That will not happen very often. Aaron Cassie now has the play from Jerry Moore. So plenty let's of, see what it is. Plenty of time, Bill. They've got two timeouts left. Ball on the five-yard line. They can get a first down. Could it be on about the half-yard line? And off to the front man, Freddie Wells, who burrows down to about the three. Thomas Aldridge, Tony DeGray, James McKinney on the tackle. Texas Tech has one timeout left, 49, 48 seconds as the play is run in. By Bruce Perkins. So I guess Tech's going to try to score with no time left, right? They've got one timeout left. They'll try one more play well, here. They don't make it here, and they want to go for the field goal. They'll use it to set up. Could go play action here, Bill. High formation. Third down. And uh, fighting to about the one-yard line is Timmy Smith. Tony Edwards makes the touchdown saving tackle for Texas. And now we have some decision-making for Jerry Moore and his staff. Of course, the offensive coordinator for Texas Tech, Tom Wilson, a good friend of yours, I know, Ray. Yeah. Just good hard-nosed football here, Bill. Looked like Tony DeGrayton may have been offsides or was in the neutral zone uh, before the ball was snapped. Just good hard-nosed football. Run right at him. Here we come. 
And I think Jerry looks like he's going to go for it. Well, he wants to measure it because, as you said, they could make a first down down on the goal line. If not, it'll be fourth and one. That might uh, do a lot to make him make up his mind. It's a first down tech. First and goal from the one. 19 seconds left to play in the first half. Now, if it's a running play, Tech is going to have to line up quick if they don't make it and try it again or try a pass to stop the stop clock. Stop the clock. And this is where experience, because uh, see, I've been impressed with his composure to this point. Now, we'll find out a lot about him. He's going to grow up in a hurry here in the next 19 seconds. What about a rollout coming back to your tight end? Uh, Buzz Tatum uh, opps opposite away from the flow. I would think that maybe they either call two plays in the huddle or else they coach could see again to the fact that if we don't get it in this time, you take the ball and throw it out of bounds. Tatum and Nash, double tight ends. Troy Smith, the lone wide receiver, out to the left. Cassie looks it over, eye formation. Hand <laughs> off, and the dive goes to Kenny Smith. Touchdown, Texas Tech. And they're going crazy in Lubbock. Good power football, Bill. That time, Timmy Smith goes behind the blocks of Jim McIntyre, Joe McMeans, Aubrey Richburg, and Jeff Keith. And the Red Raiders score with 15 seconds left in the first half, and the extra point could make it 10 to nothing, Tech. We've got a big upset on our hands here. There was a flag on the play. I believe it's against the Longhorns. Yes, it is, and they'll march it off. It's dead, dead ball foul. Bill will probably be on the kickoff. Good ball carrying there. Ricky Gann. Well, attempt the extra point for the Red Raiders. And now this crowd is beginning to sense an upset in the making here, and we might have one. It's down, it's up. And it's good. So with 15, there's a flag down, so let's hold everything. It came in the middle of the line. Texas had 12 men on the field. Bill? I believe Jerry Moore will be content to keep just points. take that extra point, don't yeah. you? Yes, I do. Plus, they're going to get 15 on the kickoff with the wind. Uh, they'll be able to kick the ball out of the end zone, and uh, or they may squib it to prevent a run back with 15 seconds left, and they're going to the dressing room with a 10 to nothing lead. So a surprise turn of events. The Texas Tech offense, or the Texas offense, I should say, has turned the football over four times in the first half. Never really got untracked. The Texas Tech defense could have a lot to do with that, however. The offense has managed to put 10 points on the board for the Red Raiders, and we may be looking at some kind of second half for you here on HSE. This is an election year, Bill. <laughs> well, we that's pointed a, that's it That's an unbelievable stat, but it's an election year. A score just announced to us moments ago, a final score. The amazing TCU Horn Frogs under Jim Wacker continue their winning ways, defeating the University of Houston 21 to 14 today. TCU takes on Texas Tech next week, and then Texas has to come to Fort Worth to play the Horn Frogs in two weeks. We will have that game for you here on HSE. Two 15-yard penalties. Well, and then Terry Orr gets quite a reception there. Third down and nine for Texas from the 42. Split backfield. Dodge another catch. Calvin Riggs, number 35, the sophomore out of Midland, Texas. And that gets them going here at Jones Stadium. talking to the tech coaches as you can see here he starts tilted up field and then comes underneath just a great job of getting the guy tilting going up field and talking to tech coaches the undersized great quickness and an overachiever a real hard working football player. Bruce Parkins back deep for tech that's John Telchik he'll be punting inside his 20 yard line he holds the ball for a little while, checks it out. He kicks the line drive. Parkins has trouble with it. He gets it, and good break there for Texas Tech. 
He looked like he was on Gerald Myers' basketball team. He dribbled it a couple of times, and luckily, luckily the ball came up for him, Ray. A big break there. Freshman, as I said earlier, freshman walk on from Lubbock Coronado. He took a good hop, then he juggled a little bit more, and then he gains five yards through the air. That's Again, I'll take a little bit of those good things happening to you. 44-yard punt by Telchik, a six-yard return by Perkins. Boy, that'll give you a heart failure if you're a head coach on the sideline. Especially 10-7 lead. Aaron Cassie hands off. Uh, no, he's going to keep it on the option as he gets across the 30 to the 33. That time he made a good fake to Freddie Wells. Ralph Darnell, however, was not fooled by Texas. Bill Texas playing a lot of man coverage and, and Tech runs the option and the wide receivers run off and the two corners turn and just run with them. If they ever pitch the ball outside and execute it and get it turned up field, they're going to have a big play. Lemuel Stinson flanked out to the left. Troy Smith to the right for the Red Raiders. High formation, second down and six. Hand off to Timmy Smith. That time he ran into Ty Allard, John Hagee. Just a cross sweep. Uh, it's not been a good play for him today. They faked the fullback going to his left and hand the ball to the tailback coming back to right with the off guard pulling. It just hadn't worked very well. Jim Moore stuffed it pretty well in. Passing down third and six. Tony Tillman checks in as the fifth defensive back for Texas. Down the line option for Cassie, and he pitches it out of bounds, intended for Timmy Smith. Unfortunately for Texas Tech, that ball took a Tech bounce and went out of bounds. Had it stayed in bounds, it could have been trouble. Uh, Texas is a five, five defensive back, a nickel scheme, and running people off, pitch a ball. If they get it executed, they might have had a play. It's hard to see on the replay there, turn up, but you talk about to make your hair turn gray. <laughs> pitch that thing with a 10 to seven lead. Dennis Vance now inside the 15-yard line. Rob Morshell this time back deep for Texas. I believe Fred Akers has used uh, four different punt return men in this game. And look at that high punt into the wind. Felt the up man. Fumbles it. Tech says they have it. Let's see. Felt fumble the ball, but he was awfully close to it. He could have recovered it himself. Let's wait and see who won the battle. Tech says the Red Raiders have it. The umpire, however, says Texas has it. Let's see it again. Boy, this is awfully close. Bill, I tell you, the wind has got to be playing tricks on the football at both ends of the field. The, the return people are having too much trouble catching. You know, the up man in the Cotton Bowl uh, bobbled one like that against Georgia, if you'll remember. On right. January the 2nd, and that uh, created a lot of grief for the University of Texas as they were trying to become the national champion. I tell you, Beller's three, right at 354 left in the in the quarter with the win. Texas, I would think, is going to put the ball up and try to hit a big play here with the win. That time, the handoff was to a new running back, Michael Brown, number 27. Scott Davis was in there for Texas Tech. Many more hits like that, and Michael will be asking for Kevin again. <laughs> <laughs> so we see Michael Brown for the first time uh, in this game for the University of Texas. In fact, in quite a while, for that matter. Michael is a 5'11", 195-pound senior out of Dallas Lake Highlands, who played quite a bit last year. Now he goes out of the game, and he's replaced again by Kevin Nelson. Terry Orr at the front of the eye, second down and nine for the Longhorns. Bill Boy Bryant in motion. Dodge rolling right. He's got some running room if he wants it. He takes it across the 40 to about the 42 where he's hogtied by Mike Kinsey. You know, Bill, the last two times they put Rob Marshall in, they've they've run the sprint out, uh, I assume, because they, they think he's a more effective blocker than Kevin Nelson is. Uh, might be a key to something coming up later on, though. Again, as we said earlier, he's, he's an ex-quarterback capable of throwing an option pass. Third down and one. Texas needs uh, to get to about the 44-yard line. Texas Tech with eight players up on the line of scrimmage. 
Just power to Terry Orr, and he tries to find some running room behind John Stewart, Brian Chester, and Terry Steelhammer. We'll find out in a moment if he got it. Brad White, Ronald Byers were right in there. Texas that time just trying to use Stewart at 280, Chester at 262, and Steelhammer at 254 to try to plow one yard out of the defense for Texas Tech. We've got 28 officials out here right at this point. Everybody's got a better idea. Well, it's going to be shy. How many of those have we had today? Four a or bunch. five measurements. Whole bunch. Well, and Fred Akers is going to punt it away. You don't want to give it to Tech at midfield. Already, Texas has survived four first-half turnovers and a couple of near misses here in the second half. So John Telchik will punt it away. Fred Akers preferring that field position, hoping that Texas Tech can make the mistake. Telchik inside his 30-yard line. Bruce Perkins, the freshman, back on about his 10. Bill, the Tech defense has picked the Tech crowd up a little bit with that stand. Telchik with a low line drive that hits it to 20. They're going to let it go. Tech is, and it just gets into the end zone. They mowed the AstroTurf properly there. That was close. A 58-yard punt by John Telchik. Austin will be the site of the NCAA Track and Field Championships also in 1985. The championship event will be held at the UT campus May 28th through June the 1st. The nation's finest collegiate tracksters will be on display at Memorial Stadium, including the Southwest Conference best like steeplechaser Patrick Sang and Texas high jumper James Lott. That is the NCAA Track and Field Championships at Austin, May 28th through June the 1st. First and 10 now for the Red Raiders at their own 20-yard line. Flip back to Timmy Smith. Smith running room, 35, 36-yard line before he's pushed out of bounds by David Fulbright. But a 16-yard run by Timmy Smith and a Texas Tech first down. I tell you, that was a uh, real good ball carry. Just excellent ball carry. That time, some good blocks on the outside, too, especially by Freddie Wells as he got a block out front. See how strong he is in the lower body at that point. Ooh, there's a face mask, possibly. Oh, I think he got the jersey that time. First down and 10. Apparently so. It wasn't called. <laughs> Again, into the middle by Timmy Smith. A gain of about two. Tony Edwards was there to meet him. Smith was up by... And when Tony's there to meet you, you usually stop. And with he and the great, well, the whole the size of that whole defensive front seven, they're very impressive and they can all run. 140 left to play in the third quarter. Texas Tech holding on to a slim 10 to 7 lead over Texas. I don't imagine Tech's going to be in too big a hurry. And the worst could happen, the clock run out and they punt with the win. Second down and nine. And off to the up man, Freddie Wells, who squirms his way to about the 43. June James, the first man in for the Longhorns. Texas Tech has had some success with that quick hitter using Wells up the middle. Usually with a good team, a good pursuit team like Texas, that play will pop you a few times. Won't it? Well, if they run the option well enough with Kasey carrying the ball outside, he's only pitched it once that and he pitched it away, but he's run the ball enough outside with the option look to hold him honest. Third down and four for the Red Raiders. Pitch back to uh, Timmy Smith, and boy, he is drowned by Ty Allard. Bulldogged him down inside the 40-yard line. If uh, Tech will be alert now, they'll be able, possibly if he doesn't mark the football, he's marked it right now they can run the clock out and not have to punt into the wind unless Texas uses a timeout he doesn't want the ball snap Vance is trying to tell him not to snap the football that's what he went up uh, Vance just told his center don't snap it they'll have it Rob Morshell wants to call a timeout now they're eight get seconds it. and they're yeah. gonna get it Texas wanted to call a timeout they the, do the Texas coaches were going crazy couldn't get anybody's attention a good call that now time. they got to punt into the wind they finally got Michael Felt's attention, and he ran up to the 
Referee and signal timeout. Eight seconds left to play in the third quarter. So that will force Dennis Vance to kick into the win. However, he hasn't done a real bad job of doing that. No, both punters have done uh, done a good job of punting the football considering the win. You know, though, Ray, that leaves Texas now with only one timeout. Yeah, but I, I tell you, this could be an important play in terms of field position. Boy, the wheels are grinding on both sides of the field. Jerry Moore, who has been under some pretty good coaches, uh, played under John Bridgers, and then he coached under Hayden Fry along with Bum Phillips. Then he went to become offensive coordinator under Tom Osborne at Nebraska, so he's been under some pretty good football minds in his tenure. And, of course, Fred Akers under those many years with Darrell Royal and being associated with Frank Burles uh, hasn't been in shabby company either. Yeah, two, they're two good football coaches, and their teams, as you can see by this game, reflect the... Uh, the coaching ability of these two men and their staff. All right, time is in. Vance will be kicking from inside his 25. Felt uh, and Morshell back deep. Good kick by Vance, good and high. Felt calling for the fair catch, and he's got it at the Texas 26-yard line. Flag so, down, Bill. A punt of 36 yards by Dennis Vance. It's a penalty against Texas. Well, that's a killer of a penalty, too, Ray, because you used a timeout to try to get some semblance of field position. There's no time left now on the scoreboard clock. So we're heading down to the other end of the field, and when we do, Texas will be penalized. Let's see what Frank Shepard says. Holding against the Longhorn. Is a dead ball foul if I read his signal right, which would make it first and 15. I believe he had his hand open. Well, we'll find out in a moment, but first we'll take this break and stay with us for the exciting 15-minute conclusion to this football game. Texas Tech leading Texas by three. This is Home Sports Entertainment. from Jones Stadium. We don't pay you all those big bucks to be uh, the anal analyst here in this game to figure that one out. You were right. Dead ball foul. It's first and 15. Now for Texas. Oh, you got nose the signals, baby. <laughs> from the 21-yard line. I've seen a bunch of those. And off to Terry Orr. Straight ahead for a couple. Scott Davis, along with Calvin Riggs, on the tackle for the Red Raiders. Terry, Terry Steelhammer came off the football then and, and blocked Brad White, all turned him all the way around. He really came off football, exploded. And they were able to pick up enough yards in there to give him a little bit of a gain. Michael Brown was in, uh, in the I formation. He is out. Rob Morshell has taken his place. Split backfield now for the Longhorns. Second down and seven. Dodge looking for some time to throw, and is it intercepted? Yes, Texas Tech has it at the 45-yard line. Carl Carter was the man of the hour for the Red Raiders. Probably a pass, Bill. It should not have been thrown. Again, somebody's got him around the waist, as you can see there, and he delivers a football. You know, you're trying to make something happen, Tim, which is admirable. Tim Crawford and Dwayne Giles were the two men really putting the heat on Todd Dodge. And, you know, he really hasn't had much time to do anything. No, and as we mentioned in the show before the, the game, in the show before the game, that pressure was going to be the key for, for Tech's secondary. Two wide receivers, Troy Smith, Charles Simpson, out wide to the right. I formation for Tech. It's going to be a sweep. Going to Timmy Smith. And he gets across the inside the 45, about the 43. Tony Edwards, the first man to him. A 
Lemuel Stinson now checking in for Texas Tech along with James McGowan and uh, Timmy Smith will come out of the lineup so you'll have Freddie Wells and McGowan in the backfield second down seven for the Red Raiders at the Texas 43 yard line 13 45 left to play in the game Tech holding on to a tight 10 to 7 lead McGowan straight ahead power and boy you could hear the helmets clash all the way up here brought the strong safety Braggs that time at Tech went twins away from it with a nice set, and they brought strong safety. He was involved in the hit. James McKinney that time and McGowan. So far in the game, uh, we've had five turnovers now for Texas. That's the second interception for Dodge, three fumbles. And Texas still hanging tough, only three down. But the Red Raiders trying to do something about it. Cassie rolling right got a man open and it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Ty Allert. Boy, what a fine job by that junior out of Houston Northbrook. 6'3", 233. And so, three downs and punt. Three downs and punt. We've seen it on both sides of the football. Excellent job by the Texas defense there. Bill of bowing their neck after uh, Tech had a big play. Uh, should probably be backed up and not have great field position, but kept Tech off the board. Ray, of course, all the great football coaches down through the years have said, if you don't have a defense, that's the heart and soul of your football team. I believe Bear Bryant said if you can hold them to uh, zero, at least you can get a tie out of it. Great kick that time by Vance. Got a roughing call. And there is a roughing the punter back on the 45. Gerald Senegal came roughing Dennis Vance. Tech would have it on the four anyway, and Texas Tech will keep the football. Another major mistake by Texas. You see him coming from the outside. What actually happens is his own man knocks him into him. They collided right there at the point. And it'll be a major one. All the way down inside the 30 to the Texas 27 yard line. Let's listen to Frank Shepard. That's the sixth penalty now of the game for Texas, uh, adding up to 65 yards. Bill, that could have been a bust in the Texas uh, front, but both guys coming from opposite sides and knocked them into him. Oh, usually you come from one side or the other on the punt block. To see, going right to the air, he's going for the bomb, going for six. Tended for Sampson, it's intercepted by Texas in the end zone. That's number 11, Tony Tillman. A sophomore out of Borger, Texas, and that Texas defense hangs tough. Straight drop back pass, they bring in the strong safety. You can see the pressure there from Braggs. Texas uh, opted to go with a lot of heat. One man-on-man -on -man coverage. Uh, just a good job by Tillman. Ball's thrown inside. Great play. Excellent position, wasn't yeah. he? Super. He couldn't have been in better shape. And uh, he read, the receiver read the blitz and uh, adjusted the route. You're looking at some great defensive backs for Texas and their sophomores. The only senior back there is Jerry Gray. We might remind you that he was uh, kicked out of the game right before the first half ended. For unsportsmanlike conduct, he delivered an elbow to a Texas Tech player's face and was escorted off the field by the officials. He has not seen any action, of course, here in the second half. He's been replaced by David Fulbright. So that leaves the cornerback duties uh, and uh, the rest of the defensive duties to sophomores and freshmen for Texas. Well, another personal foul penalty called on Texas, so that'll back the Longhorns up to the 10-yard line. You gotta, keep, you gotta keep your composure, Bill, and it's tough to do. People say, oh, that's ridiculous. I tell you, kids in the heat of battle, uh, a, lot of, a lot of intensity, and uh, it's just very, very difficult to do. And, and they've got it's something they've got to learn, something this game teaches them. Terry Orr, the lone setback. Texas. Dodge wants to throw. He's got it for Bill Boy Bryant. He fumbles, and it's recovered by Tech. At the 25, Mike Kinsey. Oh, my. Fred 
Quakers must be wondering what's going on out there. The sixth turnover for the University of Texas, and the Longhorns just keep giving the ball back to the Red Raiders. One back offense. This is a good job by Bill Boy Bryant of catching the ball. There's a hand inside. Right there. Good concentration. I don't think he even had it knocked out. He just lost he control. He just lost it, yeah. High formation for the Red Raiders. Hand off to the eye back. Blake Bronner and Bill Hefcock along with Tony Edwards. That time caught Timmy Smith for a loss of maybe one or two on the play. The Texas defense has just been outstanding today, and of course, so has the Texas Tech defense, as evidenced by the 10 to 7 score. Tech holding on to a three point lead, but now they're down. Where if they can get about five more yards, Ray, they can turn it over to Ricky Gann because the clock is becoming a big enemy for Texas. Down to 12 minutes left. Timmy Smith again caught in the backfield. Obviously, they would like to get seven and make two scores a necessity to win. Three would put them out of field goal range for attack. Well, it's going to bring up third down and 11 now for Texas Tech. Checking into the game, Troy Smith for Texas Tech, along with Lemuel Stinson. So you've got two wide receivers. Tony Griffin's in for Texas. They've gone with a nickel package. Edwards is out. Smith Wells in the backfield. Aaron Cassie, the freshman quarterback at the controls. Quarterback sneak inside the 20 to about the 18. It almost broke for a big gainer, but it got Texas Tech the necessary five yards they wanted. That time Texas was coming on the big rush. Well, I tell you, a lot of times in the nickel situation where you put five defensive backs in and take a linebacker out, people will try to run on you because you've eliminated one of you, especially in Texas case, taking Tony Edwards out of football game. Ricky Gann already has one field goal in this game, and this would put Texas Tech up by six. From the 26-yard line, 27, it'll be a 37-yard attempt. It's up, and it's no good. Off to the left. And the Texas defense holds one more time. Two years ago, he was in about that same position with 23 seconds left, and he kicked it right smooth down the middle. You always remember those, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's 10:38 left to play in this football game. Texas Tech still leading Texas by 10 to 7, but the Longhorns have to have a psychological lift right here because a six-point lead would have forced Texas into going the length of the field to score. Something that uh, Tech has allowed him to do only one time. Got Marshall in. They've sprinted now the last two times he's been in at tailback and thrown the ball. Todd Dodge going again to Bill Boy Bryant. This time he threw it over to the Texas Tech bench and a nice catch by Rusty Rourke over there. Leonard Jones, the rover, was covering. You know, Ray, on that pass pattern, William Harris broke over the middle, and he was wide open for Texas. I wonder if he comes back to the huddle and he says anything to Todd Dodd. I'm sure the guys upstairs saw him, but I tell you, Bill, that's, that's two plays in a row now that Texas has come to their right trying to get the ball to Bill Boy Bryant on Texas on Texas left side. Another thing, too, for, to get William Harris open, you've got to have some time back there, and so far, Tech has not been giving Dodge much time. Second down and 10 from the 20. Great drop back. Gets it out to Harris at the 30, about the 31-yard line, an 11-yard gain. Brad Hastings on the tackle, but Texas with a first down. That's a good job by William Harris to show you kind of athlete he is. The ball was, was not thrown very well, and good job of going up and catching. 6'5", 235. A sophomore out of Smiley, and he runs a 4'6", That's pretty good athletic ability, I'd say. Harris came in the leading receiver for Texas with 21 catches for 396 yards. Make that 22 now. And he had that big 84-yarder against Penn State. Terry Orr searches for yardage, finds a little over left guard across the 35 to the 37. Carl Carter and Brad Hastings along with Artis Jackson on the tackle. Texas put Brian and Duhon to the wide side of the field and walk Marshall from tailback up to wingback, leaving a one-back setting and handing the ball to Orr. 
uh, possibly getting an adjustment out of Tech to, to throw the ball a little bit later on. Should be a one back set this time with Kelvin Epps in. Second down and six for Texas. Got the scramble, big rush by Tech. And Wayne Dawson grabs him at about the 32 yard line. The Red Raiders are not giving Texas any time to look for a secondary receiver. That time Dodge tried to scramble out of harm's way and Dawson wouldn't let him. That time a real battle going on between Brian Chester and artist Jackson. Jackson weighing 300 pounds. Chester at 262. Wow. Well I tell you artist Jackson's played very well today for Tech. Third down and 10 for the Longhorns and jumping off sides is John Stewart. Five more yards. It's amazing. Texas with all of these penalties Ray losing their number one player in Jerry Gray having six turnovers in the game only trailing by three, three points. points. And I tell you from, from Jerry Moore's side of it, I'm I'm sure he's very aware. A lot of times you, you have all these things happen and you're not able to take advantage of them and all of a sudden you end up fighting for your life. Texas right now fighting for its life. 846, 845. Now the scoreboard becomes an enemy of the Longhorns. Third and 15. Throwing it up here for Brent Duhon, and he had him open for a moment at the 45-yard line and underthrew him. Carl Carter was the man there for Texas Tech. And the Red Raiders hold and listen to this Jones Stadium crowd. I'll tell you what you did. You sent Jerry Moore some pretty good coaches from Rice. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> And I tell you, old Spike Dyke, he was on the Texas staff for a long time. Spike's a good one. Telchik kicking from his 15. Look at him turn the ball over, and he drives Perkins all the way back to the 22-yard line. Another booming kick by John Telchik of 50 yards. 8.28 left to play. Tech leading by three. We'll be back in a moment. This is Home Sports Entertainment. Texas Tech now on its own 23-yard line. Now what you want, Ray Auburn, is a good long drive to eat up some of that clock. 8.28 left to play. First down, first downs. Hand off to Timmy Smith over left guard for a gain of about three across the third, uh, 25 to about maybe the 26. That's just a good hard-nosed football play uh, off tackle, double down, kick out. Somebody's hurt there coming off the field for Texas Tech. Maybe Joe Walter, I'm not sure. Mike McBride, I think, Is it? Bill. Yeah. High formation, second and seven. Hand off to the up man. Uh, that's Freddie Wells, who's about the 28-yard line. So another gain of three. Not fancy, but you've had two carries now for a gain of about six, and that gives them a good shot at third and short here. Obviously a big down. I'm not sure Tech will bring the ball out on the option. There, there might be a good play if they can get it executed, but I'm not sure they'll do that. Two wide for Simps uh, Simpson wide to the left. Troy Smith to the right. High formation. This time on the draw play, Cassie across the 30 to the 32, but I think he's going to be about a yard shy of the needed first down, and Dennis Vance trots on the field. That time, Blake Bronner did a good job of almost overrunning the play, but catching back right. up to it. Uh, again, they faked the fullback after having handed the ball to him, running some option, and then, and then Kasee comes back away from the flow. Uh, good job of, of diagnosing the play, keeping from getting the first down. An amazing statistic just shown me, uh, Ray Auburn Tech now is three of 19 in third down conversions. So that shows you how tough the Texas defense has been. Marshall all the way back to his 20. There's a lane. There was a clip, and they and didn't get it. Cuts it up the field to the 30-yard line. So Marshall almost 
found that lane for a lot more running room, but he did return it 12 yards. That was a punt of 49 yards with about an 11-yard return. Well, you know something that everybody takes for granted is that old boy that snaps that ball between his legs, sees the world upside down 14, 15 yards with, with a guy 260 on his nose. And I, you know, have great admiration for those guys. And, and that's that's an art. It's it's something that uh, uh, people just take for granted. Praise the ball's them all you get back. Praise them all you want to. That was my job. Well, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, well. I could, you could just hear that big guy. You couldn't see him, but you could hear him moving around in front of you. Okay, now, 6.35 left to play. It's up to Todd Dodge. Try to get some points for Texas. He's out here. Intended for Kelvin Epps. Dwayne Giles defending for Texas Tech, and Epps almost had it. Epps has all the speed for Texas. He's a 4-5 man. And they got him isolated on the backer. Coming into the game now, Russell Hayes also checks in for Texas in place of Epps. So uh, Bill Boy Bryant will come out to the right. Russell Hayes in place of Brent Duhon to the left. Split backfield, Texas second down and 10. Dodge having to scramble again for his life. He looks across the middle. What a great job that time Bill Boy Bryant did of coming back to the football. First down, Texas. I tell you. You're right, Bill. This is a, an excellent job of, of breaking the route and coming back to football. And again, Todd Dodge is under a great deal of pressure. And he throws the ball just as he gets hit. And, and Bill Boy Bryant does a great job, as we said, of coming back to the football, breaking the route and coming back. First down and 10. 6-11, 6-10 left in the game. Texas trailing by three points. Dodge going for the alley-oop pass to Brent Duhon, and it was covered well at the 35-yard line. Carl Carter, with help from Roland Mitchell, Merv Skirlark, all over there helping out. It's two pretty good secondaries. They are both playing very well. We'd like to uh, welcome all of our new viewers in the Lubbock area and Amarillo, as well as San Antonio, joining us on this entertaining football game from Jones Stadium in Lubbock, Texas, here on the HSE Football Network. Home Sports Entertainment, your ticket for excitement in your home, sports activity year-round. 6.03 left to play. Second down and 10. Dodge with plenty of time. Looks for Duhon. He's got him at the 35. 15-yard gain. First and 10 for Texas. Merv Skirlark, the tackler for Texas Tech. But now, Dodge seems to be getting more time in that pocket. There's not, not the pressure on him here good route by Duhon, and I tell you, he took a hit from Skirlock. It's good concentration to hang on to the football. Another thing that Tech is allowing Dodge to do is to step up there and plant that foot, and he's really drilling that football. Bill Boy Bryant comes wide to the right. They just checked Larry Mathis in, number 96 for Texas Tech. He's a, an excellent pass rusher. He's been alternating right and left in. First and 10, the ball on the Tech 35-yard line. Dodge Looking for Russell Hayes. He's got him at the 22, 20, down to the 15. There's Russell Hayes out of San Antonio, Texas. A first down, Texas. Merv Skirlark made the tackle, but that time the little water bug from San Antonio. Six foot, 187, backup receiver, Russell Hayes. Did a good job of coming back. And look at Dodge, look him off. Bill, you, you can't see it on the screen, but that, that was an excellent route by Hayes. Excellent route. I know his daddy, Denny Hayes, is awfully proud of him on that play. First and 10, the ball on the Tech 15-yard line. Hand off to Terry Orr, a gain of about three to the 12. Bill, the formation they've used, tight end in motion. What a big, big drive this is for Texas because if the Longhorns can get it in, then Texas Tech is looking at a four-point deficit and not much time left to get it in the end zone. 4.50 left to play in the game. Obviously, Texas would like to eat as much of the clock up as they can and, and get seven points on the board. Dodge rolling to his right. He's got running room if he wants it. He's going to throw it. He's got a touchdown. There's the out of bounds. He's out of bounds. 
Bill Boy Bryant. Was standing there. Leonard Jones was watching the play. Dodge could have run this one in, Ray Auburn. Right. He had 15 yards to the goal line, but he saw Bill Boy Bryant. Yeah, Bill, you can't. We, we couldn't pick it up on the screen. But I tell you what happens. They had a lineman out in front of him. All he's got to do is make a go call, and they take off and run the ball in. I'll tell you, the, the worst that could have happened, he could have been tackled on about the one or the two had uh, Leonard Jones reacted fast enough. So it brings up a big, big play. Third down and seven from the 12. Everybody in Jones Stadium on their feet. Rolling right. This time he is going to keep it. He gets a block. And he's down to the four-yard line. And he's got a Texas first down, I do believe. Well, the coaches upstairs, Ray Auburn, saw the same thing we did. They saw all of that green AstroTurf the last play. Right. Good block by Rob Marshall there, cracking back. They pulled the onside guard and got the full back out in front of a one-back set. Uh, as, as you say, the coaches upstairs saw it, and they came back and uh, ran the football. I think Dodge was a little shaken up on the play. As you see him limping around, he lost his left sock, but he, he knew where that first down marker was, and he dove for it at about the four. It'll be uh, placed at the three-yard line. And it'll be first and goal from the three with 4.21 left to play. Mike Kinsey shaken up on the play. What a game Mike Kinsey has had today. 6'2", 226, out of Brownwood. Both defenses played extremely well. They really have. And a really, really good defensive football game. All right, here comes the power look for Texas. Jerome Johnson in the game. Going out of the wide receivers. Jenkins and Harris are both in. Terry Orr and Jerome Johnson in the backfield, split backfield for Texas. First and goal from the Texas Tech three. And off to Orr, and Texas Tech really had that one smothered. Carl Carter did a good job that time of coming up and filling the gap. That hasn't worked for Texas, though, Ray, the last couple of times. No, they've gone wing or strong to their right and then run the ball back to the left side and uh, haven't been able to make any yardage. Okay, what's the call by Fred Akers now? Second down. Maybe a bootleg gets away and a pass off of that same play fake. Goal to go from the six. It's time, a handoff again to Johnson. And he gets back down to the original line of scrimmage at about the three-yard line. It'll bring up third and goal to go from the three. Rusty Rourke, Larry Mathis on the tackle for Texas Tech. So what do you do here? You want to take a chance, take two downs to try to run it in? That's somebody else's decision. <laughs> Already with one tie this year, does Texas have? Artis Jackson is now checked into the game along with Ronald Byers, Brad White, Wayne Dawson. Big, big play. Third and three. Dodge throwing it up for his big tight end, and does he catch it? No! William Harris tried to make the reception on his back. Got a flag down up in the end zone, Bill. Merv Skerlark did a good job that time of knocking the ball in the air, and I believe the call is against Texas, holding against the Longhorn. Well, Texas Tech's going to move it back. They're motioning like they want to take that penalty, and they will. The only problem here, Ray, is it's only a five-yarder. Oh, the 20 second, uh, 25 second clock must have run out. Oh, already. had it. I thought he was calling he holding. He delay of the game, so that's going to make it maintain the third down. Coach Akers is hollering about something. Well, you know, that may have been a break for Texas then. Stays at uh, third down. The scoreboard says fourth down and eight. There it goes. Back to Now three. it's back to third. What I was going to say, though, that when the, with the incompletion that time, it would have brought up a fourth, fourth down. Fourth down, right. 
So uh, Texas may inadvertently uh, received a break there by the call. Here's Larry Mathis coming. Larry back Mathis, to number 96, here. checks in in place of David Beaudry. Third down and goal from the eight yard line. Last gasp attempt for Texas. He throws it up for grabs. Bill Boy Bryant tried to come back and make the catch, but a great job that time. I believe that was uh, Roland Mitchell. Roland I believe. Mitchell and Leonard Jones back there. I believe uh, Everett also was in yeah, there. Eric Everett. I tell you, Bill, you remember Eric Everett. You remember the Arkansas game? They threw the fade route, which they just threw then several times. It's a good job of the tech coaches preparing their players for that eventuality. And a good job, Eric Everett. So now Jeff Ward will attempt a field goal from the 15-yard line. Tack on 10 more, a 25-yard attempt to tie this game with 2.17 left to play. It's up and it's good. And we've got a kiss your sister type of a situation, a tie football game at 214. Texas Tech 10 and Texas 10. It's a good job of the Tech defense, Bill. Uh, bowing their neck when they had to. Well, Fred Akers really had no choice. It's Ray Auburn, uh, he's got to go for the tie rather than the loss. Yeah, with, uh, with the conference situation the way it is. Well, TCU won today. That's right, over Houston, 21-14. So the big battle looms large now in Fort Worth in two weeks. TCU plays Texas Tech. Texas Tech is 2-2 two and two in the conference race. TCU is now 4-1 and one in the conference race. And in two weeks, we'll play Texas in Fort Worth. Well, Tech has three timeouts with 2.14 left and the win. So there's there's plenty of time to get the ball in, in position for Ricky Gann to, to win the thing. We could see a ferocious drive here by Texas Tech. So hang on for quite a finish. I think we're going to have one. You're watching this on Home Sports Entertainment. There's the story for you right there. It's going to be important that Aaron Cassie maintain his composure. Uh, a lot of things have been going through his mind right now, sitting on the bench waiting for this kickoff. Jeff Ward will kick it off from the 40, and it's a little chip shot. And it went out of bounds at the 32-yard line. That was almost a pretty nifty call there because... Uh, the University of Texas had James Lott, one of their quicker players, going down underneath the kick, and he almost had that ball stayed in. He might have caught it on the fly. Right, he called a fair catch. <laughs> called for a fair catch, and then didn't go over there. That would have scared me a little bit. I'd have been willing to help him. Well, Texas is going back, but Texas, they want the ball right, right there, there, and that's their option. Right. So it's great field position for Texas Tech. And here we go. Oh, they're trying. The Tech coach is trying to get him up to the line of scrimmage to get a play run. Because the Texas defense is not set up out there yet. Here comes Texas Tech. Troy Smith to the right. High formation. 214 left to play. Tech will have to go 70 yards. Or somewhere in that vicinity. And Lott almost could have picked it off as he could have gone for a lot of daylight. James Lott that time, the pass intended for Troy Smith. Ooh. That'll cause your hair to turn gray in just three seconds. You better, know, Ray, but, he was just going for the knockdown. Right. Better be alert for the out and up, though, breaking on the ball that quick on the out cut. It took about six, six seconds off the clock, so they're, they have plenty of time. Actually, with the wind to their backs, they really only need to go about... Uh, Mm, what, 30, uh, 25, 30 yards? Yeah, with his foot. With Gann's leg. There's a draw play. And it's not going to gain much. About three. Ty Allert was there. Uh, he and Tony Edwards don't get fooled very much. And that time, Timmy Smith thought he had a little running room. But the hole closed quickly. I'm sure that uh, Coach Akers would like to call time out here, but only having one left. They're going to have to have some field position in order to get Jeff Ward to be able to try to win the ball. 140 left. Second down and eight. Aaron Cassie. He's being smothered by, guess who? Tony DeGreat. Number 99. The All-American out of Snyder, Texas. 
Well, when you need a big play, he's always there. And Texas immediately calls a timeout to stop the clock at 127. So the Longhorns, with no timeouts left, will get the punt. So it'll be up to Dennis Vance now, if you're a Texas Tech fan, to punt that thing deep. Again, while we were talking about the snap, catch it, get the ball off, block well up front, and then cover like crazy. Now, Ray, Texas has come close to block, uh, blocking a couple of Vance's punts already today. Uh, several times. In fact, the first two times they punted, they came after it and nearly blocked it. Then they, they came after it in what I think was a bust somewhere up front, and they knocked each other into it to get the roughing call. But uh, two theories here, obviously. One, you go block it. Uh, two, you set, set the wall up and try to get a good return. They've got Marshall back here, so I'm assuming they want to make sure they get the ball fielded and get it as far upfield as they can and then take uh, take the football down and try to get Ward in position to get a field goal. There you saw Rob, and there is Dennis Vance standing inside his 10-yard line. So he'll punt it from around the 13. I would say just looking at their alignment, it's going to be a return to set up a wall. Oh, got some movement. Movement by Tech. And uh, it looked like it might have been James Johnson. Well, back it up five more yards. This is where there's a lot of pressure on a punter to get away a good punt. That'll back Vance up now inside his five. 127 left. Tech and Texas tied at 10 apiece. Again, I think Texas is going to go to set the wall and return. This time, not a very good punt. Morshell coming in on it, and he's got it at about the 45-yard line. Great field position for Texas. He almost fumbled the football, but he held on. Had he been able to field it on the run, Ray, he might have made five see. or ten more yards. Yeah, the ball kicking with the wind. The ball's not kicked that well. He had a chance to catch it on the run and, and make eight, ten more yards up the field. Not as good a punt as Dennis Vance wanted, and now Texas has a minute 19, no timeouts. And Here's remember, they... Jeff Ward has a heck of a leg, too, so Texas doesn't have to go that far to get him ready for field goal range. Exactly, and here's where the experience of Todd Dodge will pay off. The composure in a situation like this. Rolling right, he's looking for, I believe it was um, Marshall. Dwayne Giles was all over him. Good pressure that time by Brad White, number 74. David Beaudry is in the game. You know, in these situations here, Bill, the fans always, if you drop and cover everybody, they want you to rush. <laughs> if you rush everybody and you don't cover, then they want you to they want you to cover. There's a fine line here. Everybody's philosophy is different in these two-minute situations. Watch Kelvin Epps. He's got speed. He's on the left side. They're throwing to the big tight end, William Harris. And he's got it at the 30-yard line for Texas. And now the Longhorns will uh, have the stop the clock to move the chains, but look at the big guy get open. A gain of 20. They, they, he's been sort of silent today till they needed the big play, and he came up with it. Boy, he went off and left Rusty Rourke, didn't he? A 31-yard pass and run play. Now the clock starts, 105, 104 from the 32, and throwing it out of bounds. Well, <laughs> Brent Duhon turned around, and there was the ball right in his helmet. Carl Carter was in the vicinity. I tell you, old uh, Jeff Ward's got to have a few things running through his mind right at this point. I think, though, Ray, what Texas needs is about, wouldn't you say, uh, five or six more yards to get him comfortably within his range because the wind has died down a little bit now. It's not as... The flags aren't blowing quite as hard as they were at the start of the game. And yeah, they look to be blowing more across the field than they were before, which could you know, have a bearing on a guy who's not kicked in this stadium that much. I'd say they would ideally like to get at least 10 closer, but that may not happen. They're going to run the football. Right. If they'll get some blockers out, he's got some room to run, and he runs out of bounds at the 25-yard line of Texas Tech. Todd Dodge needed one block down there. He could have made 10 or 15 more. 55 seconds. He only ran off six seconds on the clock on that play. Bill, you know, you get those linemen out in front of you, and if with as much noise and excitement as there is, if you don't have a call, and I'm sure they do, 
to let them to alert them the fact that you're running they end up with two big guys running out there look good and they're not much not much help to you boy ray how quickly the game can change texas tech now calls a timeout the defense looks a little tired over there i think it's i think it's a good call bill to stop texas momentum give our kids a chance to gather up uh, the coaches get them over and talk to them any, any particular things that they based on scouting report uh, based on past information that they anticipate out of Texas at this point. Well, it's a real credit to Fred Akers and his staff and his football team that with all of the things that they have done wrong today, six turnovers, numerous mistakes, numerous penalties, they have been able to stay in this football game. And a credit has to go to that man, Jerry Moore and his staff, for an excellent coaching job today and a great defense for Jerry and the guys and. They had the lead, and they just haven't been able to hold on to it as it's 10-10 to 10 now, and how quickly things change in football. Just a moment ago, we were talking about Tech moving down the field to score possibly the winner, but a short punt, and now Texas is back down on the Tech 25-yard line. But I tell you, both staffs have done a good job. Uh, Texas has not been one of their better football games, but they've done a good job of, of their guys hanging in there, and Texas Tech obviously came to play. Third down and four. He's going to roll left. He's got to get out of bounds now to stop the clock, and he gets down to the 22-yard line. That's going to be enough, I believe, for a Texas first down. Calvin Riggs ran Todd Dodge out of bounds. But Hell, this is run all the way. There's no pass. Back, see the backside number 78. Stewart pulls, and he turns backside to block on 96. Uh, the confusion being that they wasted it was a great play out there by Calvin Riggs three Texas guys tried to block Calvin Riggs and he played him off now I'm really impressed with the way that kid's played today really played well 47 seconds left to play Texas remember has no timeouts left so what's very important is is when they run this play the clock will continue to run Going to be a handoff, holding on to the football is Rob Morshell. He fumbles it, but there's the a Texas man right there. One of the big offensive linemen. Let's see who it is. Number 78, John, John Stewart. Stewart, is the man of the hour. Now Texas has to throw it out of bounds to try to stop the clock. 35 seconds, 34 seconds. Down to 30 seconds. Dodge making sure everybody hears the signals. That's some movement up in the line. Movement in the line, and Texas is backing up. It looks like it'll be, yes, that's what it is. Bill, I don't know why Todd Dodge took the step and fell down. They have no timeouts left. They they keep the clock running if they don't get a penalty, and they are, uh, you know, they're in a mad scramble to get the field goal. I off. think I'd run Jeff Ward in there right now and not worry about it. Here he comes right now. Well, now there's a little confusion on that sideline. And uh, Ward is running in now. The clock is running. 17, 16, 15 seconds. It'll be from the 25. Count 10. A 35-yard field goal. One of the biggest in this young man's career. Seven seconds left. Ward, it's up. It's good. Jeff Ward with an apparent game-winning field goal with only three seconds left on the scoreboard clock. Oh, what pressure. I tell you, uh, that's, uh, that's just a very, very tough way to lose a football game. I sympathize with uh, Jerry Moore and his staff, and I, you know, it's a great credit to the Texas team. They didn't play very well, and apparently they're going to win a football game. Well, that's what I was going to say. Uh, it's a tough for that team right there. The Red Raiders fought their heart out all afternoon and deserve possibly a better fate. You know, Bill, the worst thing is to go in the dressing room and face those kids. Uh, it's very difficult to, what do you say to a bunch of kids that fight their tail off like that and come up three seconds short? Jeff Ward, now Ray Auburn, is 23 of 26 in his career at the University of Texas, and he has made some big, big field goals. Remember the one at Oklahoma in the driving rainstorm for a tie there. He's Every made two pressure field goals in this game. Everybody should have walk-ons like that. Wow. A walk-on on his right from 
Austin, a soccer player, walked on last year as a freshman. What a five. And now he will kick off only three seconds left on the Jones Stadium clock. Troy Smith is back deep. And uh, he'll take it and run it back out, and this is it. Gets out to the 20, and he's run out of bounds at the 30-yard line, and that's the end of the football game. The Texas Longhorns fight back from adversity to defeat the hard luck. Texas Tech Red Raiders by the score of 13 to 10. Ray Auburn and I will be back with some final comments right after this brief timeout. This is Home Sports Entertainment. We'd like to thank Texas Tech Athletic Director John Connolly, SID Joe Hornaday, along with the Texas staff of Athletic Director DeLos Dodds and Sports Information Director Bill Little. Without their help, of course, this telecast not possible. The executive producer today has been Jack Stanfield. The director of productions, John McIntyre.